Pharmaceutical quality by design has been widely discussed for over a decade. This video discusses a practical and pragmatic method for documenting the critical quality attributes of small molecule drug substances. Identifying critical quality attributes of the drug substance was first discussed in ICHQ7 in late 2000. Later, CQAs for drug product made their debut in ICHQ8. The word critical shows up 51 times in Q7 and 21 times in Q8. It became obvious that the industry would be talking about critical for the foreseeable future. Identifying critical variability was reinforced in ICHQ9. ICHQ11 made identifying impact variability on drug substance CQA central to the overall discussion. Understanding critical has a large impact on how the facility and equipment are qualified, the process is validated, and manufacturing is executed. The purpose of this series is to bring clarity to these requirements. It all starts with understanding the critical quality attributes. This video is the prequel to the three pharmaceutical quality risk management. You can watch them as part of the pharmaceutical quality risk management playlist. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. I have conducted risk assessments and identified the CQAs for over 50 drug substances. The discussions were long. Now the process takes just as long as it needs to explain the concept to those who haven't done it before. The CQAs in the broad sense vary little from API to API. The actual acceptance ranges vary, but the nature of the CQAs themselves is quite consistent. Even then, regulatory expectations tend to drive the specification values to be consistent from API to API. When I first started doing this in the early 2000s, I was much younger and tended to be a purist. Critical meant impacting safety or efficacy. I would argue that the appearance of the API, while important, would not impact the safety or efficacy of a film-coated tablet. Now I am older and more realistic. You will not remove appearance from the specification and the risk management process will not be impacted by that CQA. Those who want appearance can have it and we cut two hours out of the meeting. One thing about the pharmaceutical industry is there is guidance for most things. The industry likes the comfort of a predictable regulatory environment. My approach is to readily adopt what will not change and find real value in defining the control strategy, the synthesis as a whole. In the end, we have very little flexibility on API CQAs and specifications, but the synthesis steps are wide open. The CQAs of the drug substance vary little from those provided in the table. The table represents the starting point in moving the process forward. In short, if it is on the drug substance specification, it will show up as critical. Notice the designation GMP control. Quality attributes that are GMP controlled are unaffected by variation of the process or materials. The control resides in the quality system itself. For example, identity cannot be impacted by changes in the process. The appearity profile might change or the assay might change, but the identity is what it is. The synthesis for API 123 will not result in API 456. The identity is controlled by ensuring the correct packaging and labels are used. The process development scientist or process engineer cannot impact the label by process design. The GMP system ensures proper labeling. Furthermore, the synthesis will not impact the microbial load on the API. It may if the molecule promotes growth with associated concern with residual moisture. The GMP environment might have impact microbial load, but not the process. The CQAs most discussed are water, polymorph, and particle size. 
The criticality of water, polymorph, and the particle size is determined by the requirements of the drug product. Early in the development process, I recommend the drug substance team assume these attributes are critical until such time when the drug product team provides data to show they are not critical. If they are not critical, then arguments can be made to keep them off the specification. Data will still need to be generated whether critical or not. The data will be in the submission to justify the proposed specification or data will be presented to justify not having a specification. The overall amount of work on the development team will not change much. Any specification that can be eliminated affords most post-approval flexibility to the commercial organization. It also results in less testing, fewer opportunities for investigations, and less trending in annual product reviews. As one who loathes non-value-added work, I champion the cause of fewer specifications where warranted. An important consideration is documented the impact of the CQA and subsequent purpose of the specification. Residual solvents, elemental impurities, and organic impurities have ICH guidance driving the specification determination. Drug substance assay will most likely land in the 98 to 102 percent range. Chiral molecules will have control on chiral purity even if the process cannot impact the purity level. The detailed risk assessments will define the control point. Subscribe to our channel and follow our Sincero Consulting business page on LinkedIn. We make several posts a week on LinkedIn, which you don't want to miss. You can find the link in the description below.